Nick. Yes. The artist formerly known as Nickel Cat. <laughs> and Michigan's his Greninja. Resonant Greninja player. Yep. And I saw Nick play Monday, I believe. And his Greninja play has leveled up. Yeah. For sure. From the last time I saw it, he's so clean. He's so quick. And I just want to say I really appreciate that Nick is uh, using the best Pokemon ever made for his tag. <laughs> yeah, he is a Sceptile main in Pokémon, so he uses uh, Sceptile's tag in this game to uh, give him to channel some power, I guess, if you would. But yeah, I'd like to to speak to what you, uh, to continue off your point about uh, Nick. Uh, about like earlier this year, he was really doubting himself as a player, and he was actually borderline ready to quit. And it sucked because like. He has a lot of like he's got a lot of talent. He's a really uh, very solid player. But like when you are have like a defeatist mentality, you're already losing half the battle before you even sit down. Mentality is so important in this game because of how volatile it is. Yeah. You cannot let potential comebacks or you know just the thought of being in kill percent like you can't let those things tilt you because if you allow that, you are oh my gosh this game of rock paper scissors. That was like five ties in a row. <laughs> I didn't actually look. <laughs> the uh, if you're if you're allowing yourself to be tilted, you've you've already lost in a sense because your opponent has a mental advantage over you, and yep. that's a huge deal, especially when they recognize that you're tilted. Yeah, and uh, Nick, so he had that uh, that mental I guess block against himself, but uh, he's readjusted his mentality. If you guys follow him on Twitter, I believe it's just, uh, I actually don't know. His Twitter, he just changed his Twitter handle again. But uh, he's known for, like, re uh, recently, like, he's just been, like, being more positive. He's got a better outlook towards everything. And uh, he's definitely seen a lot of improvement. A few weeks ago, he ended up uh, knocking low one in a loose rack at 2-0. So, like, the, he definitely has it in him to uh, achieve that next level play. Oh, I didn't even know he... Uh, beat, he got a win on low one. That's yeah. crazy. Beat his uh, Luigi and Wario. So, Louis, uh, low one's pretty uh, two like best characters in a way. All right, and right off the bat, Nick, quick 40% uh, lead. He's just uh, playing it smart. He's letting uh, Kenta approach a little carelessly. And he's uh, just utilizing his camping game as Greninja. Yes. And... So far, you know, we haven't really seen Kenta get any openings. That's, you know, what he thrives off of because Kenta, I think the thing he's known for most within Michigan is, like, his really strong conversions. Yeah. He definitely will uh, go 0 to 100 real quick when he's got uh, you locked into, like, some ju uh, sort of box juggle. So to see him uh, almost, like, struggle today with... Uh, just like finding. Oh, that's it. Oh God, and it's on. Yeah, and on town and city, town and city, fox, high percent, yeah. recipe for success on an up throw up air. Nick takes a very early stock, and he is in the driver's seat right now. You can just see he's got a calm, collected look on his face, almost like a silent killer. Kenta just trying to find an opening to uh, bring this back. You can see he's throwing out the uh, aerials, trying to find a quick confirm into a uh, up smash. Oh, I really didn't think that would connect. I thought Nick had enough time to shield there. Yep. But and as soon as Kenta gets the kill, the head starts bopping. You know he's jammed to some type of yeah. music, Kenta, usually gaming music. Yeah, Kenta's a very emotional player, so... Yeah, that's putting it lightly. Yeah, things... <laughs> uh, when he gets tilted, he can start playing really bad, but when he isn't tilted like when he's got momentum he takes it a long way usually yeah. so we'll we'll see where he goes with it uh now now that the game's even back up yep all right you can tell like nick he's uh he's trying to find his footing again uh he got uh thrown like he got thrown off of his uh frog feet he's trying to get back on the ground but uh we gotta see him uh maybe uh put back up that uh, little wall just Start throwing out the single shurikens, uh, forcing Kenta to approach a little unsafely. Oh, going Kenta trying to go for a very uh, abrupt like forward smash read on uh, Nick because if Nick was caught sleeping, that DI 
could have cost him a uh, stock and the game one. Yeah, and when Kenta overextended there while pressuring Nick, uh, Nick opted to just roll away towards center stage. He didn't go for a punish or anything. Just opted to get stage control. Yep. I kind of like that because I don't think he had any sort of guaranteed punish. Oh, oh that's it. That forward smash is going to take it. Yeah. Uh, just barely outspacing that neutral air. Yeah. Stood right outside the active range of that, and that that will take it for Nick. And you know what I was like? We were speaking about this. How like Nick, even when he was down, and Kenta was starting to build up that momentum, starting to really take control of the game. Nick, his expression never changed. He didn't really show any signs of just worry, and he just remained calm. Brought it back. He started bringing out the single single shot shurikens. Was getting a lot of uh, mileage off of uh, the Greninja gentleman, or just the Greninja Greninja rapid jab. So. Kudos there to Nick for keeping the, the cool head and uh, securing that game one win because against Kenta, against players who are like Kenta where they're very motivation or very uh, emotionally driven, if you can take game one, you already have a pretty good uh, advantage. advantage going into the next game. Yes, that's very true. And yep. th like you said, Nick used to struggle with uh, mentality issues. So yeah. seeing him just be able to, you know, maintain that that those like steel nerves throughout exactly. the the whole match is an incredible improvement. Yep. All right, Kenta trying to get a dash attack or uh, get up off the ledge to try and uh, throw uh, Nick off, but get some stage control off of the rapid jab. And you saw Nick; he was trying to get out of that jab. Oh, nice! Oh. Didn't get out of it. Or yeah. Kenta managed to pop out of it. Unfortunately, <laughs> did not stay in it. You gotta oh, feel. Up air. Just a little bad for Nick getting like a read like that and then uh, receiving yep. minimal reward. But you know what? It happens. And uh, you can't let it get the best of you. You could see the way Kenta reacted there. He was expecting uh, Nick to do a, a, a roll in. Oh, let's go, good Nick. Good response. Yeah, it was a really good response. Yeah, like you are saying, good response. He's definitely uh, reading the pattern of recovery that, oh, that uh, might Kenta's be it. been showing. Good read from Kenta. Oh, look at that. Head bopping. Let's go. Yeah, when Kenta gets momentum, that's, you know, you, you really don't want to deal with confident Kenta. Yeah. Because, it's, like we it's said, scary. his conversions are really strong. Yeah. Uh, the moment Kenta's in the driver's seat, you really need to, it's like you're playing tug of war against an army of 50 people, and you're just a one-man person. That's oh, yeah. what it's like to try and uh, take momentum away from Kenta. Oh, nice forward smash. Reads uh, the... Um, uh, illusion on stage and that's kind of like Kenta's uh, I guess call card on how he recovers he's one to eat it's like always will illusion to the uh, to the ledge or he'll try to illusion on the mid stage which is like usually what a normal Fox thing does yeah. but Kenta he does it all he does it a lot oh nice. down tilt into forward air that was a 100% confirmed you all have been on the most of us have been on the receiving end of one <laughs> of those and that's one of those things where you like it's an unavoidable yeah, and that was really nice because he, he hit Kenta's shield with the forward air and then just uh, Kenta tried to run in and punish and Nick just stuffed that. Yep. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. okay. <laughs> it, you, whenever you're, like, dealing with somebody who has to co recover real low and they have, like, one of those, like, kind of risky recoveries like uh, Greninja and you see that pineapple, like, corner, you're like, oh, no, it, is it, it going to happen? Yeah, it makes you hold your breath. Because you never, you never want to see someone go out like that. No. Regardless of who you're rooting for. Yeah, and right now, Kenta, you can tell he's kind of he's walking patiently. He's trying to find single hit openings that can lead to a conversion. Because he knows that a, a stray nair. That was really good from Kenta. Okay. Ooh, that's yep. that shield poke. I'm that really was so close. I'm impressed that Nick was able to get out of that yep. situation. Yeah, because you can tell Kenta, he's looking for the strain air, he's looking for the down airs, he's just trying to find something that can lead into an up smash conversion. But right now, Kenta, he's getting a little too tunnel vision on those those small hits, and uh, Nick's starting to bring this back, and Greninja, he's a terrifying character, because one down tilt uh, into up smash with this much rage, that'll kill Fox on this stage, at, at, even at 70%. Oh no! He dropped his shield and Kenta's gonna take full advantage of that, get the running up smash, and we're going to game three. Yep. And you can tell Nick Nick knows he dropped his shield preemptively. And Kenta, if you guys saw it, that man had the biggest sigh of relief that he managed to <laughs> squeeze that out barely. Because uh, like we were saying, uh, Kenta was just one down tilt, hit, being hit by a down tilt from death yes. in, that, in that instant. But we, we saw him keep his composure and 
just managed to remain calm and Again, that's that's everything, right? Yeah. That's what won Nick the last game. That's what won Kenta this game. You have to stay calm. You yep. can't allow and yourself to tilt so hard that you you just throw away the game. Exactly. Now let's see. What would, as uh, if you were in Kenta shoes, what would you ban? Game one was on Town and City. Game two is on Dreamland. So clearly, Kenta's not really fearing the uh, right. low uh, low See, ceilings that much. My guess is a lilac ban. I would have I would have banned Town and City because that is allegedly Greninja's best stage. Yeah. Every Greninja I've talked to says they love Town and City. It's easily their favorite stage. At this point, my guess is that the ban is going to be coming li is lilac, and I, we're probably going to see an FD pick. I would be inclined to agree. Duck hunt, duck hunt from okay. from Nick. Okay. Interesting pick. He's def. Oh man, both players <laughs> taking a big breath going into game number three. Yeah, there's a lot on the line here. This yeah, is this, losers bracket. This is their tournament. Uh, this is tournament point for either one of these players here. Kenta opening up uh, first blood, and now you know gaining a little bit of percent, but more importantly, <gasps> this, the lead in terms of state oh, control. No. Oh no, I thought uh, Nick was gonna go out there and just down air him to just oblivion. I, w I was partially expecting like a hydro pump. That could work as too. Oh, nice stuff. All right, Kenta just getting that explosive, just tilts. Like yeah. we're saying, the conversions off Kenta when he's got a, riding a, just an ounce of momentum. Right, he can go zero to a seventy-five in an instant. This is more like what we were talking about earlier, where he just gets big damage off of a couple stray hits. Yeah, both these players, they're just looking for little bits oh. of like little bit of an opening between uh, their their count their opponent to just try and find a way to get back in. Like, you see Nickel Cat, he's trying to find these openings just to get a, a, a gentleman or a rapid jab to just, like, rack up some quick percent and just get Kenta to the corner away from him so he can just start getting that center stage, put up the camp game with those shurikens. And Kenta himself is just looking for these little bits of an opening so a straight nair or a down air will just get him the kill. Yeah, this is another thing you'll see from Kenta a lot is like once he starts looking for the kill, he'll start double jumping a lot. Uh, yeah. Looking for that down air, uh, soft air. See, like he's a lot of full hops and a lot of double jumps. Yep. And he, he mixes it up well uh, to his credit. Up throw. Oh, Ooh. no up air. That's going to get. Oh, that's no. not a convert. Oh, nice Ooh. down smash. Yeah. Missed I love tech that by track Kenta. down up air. All right. See, Kent, or Nick should have realized in that situation. Oh. That's it. Nick should have realized that in that situation. He should, like, he knows Kenta, like, if Kenta misses the going, getting to the ledge the first time, he's going to jump side B right to the ledge every single time. So at that point, he should have been there. He should have been ready to stuff it with a forward smash or an up smash. Missed the, and he missed that opportunity, and now he's got to try and claw his way back into this, just like it's game two all over again. Yep. Ooh, oh. he almost, he almost, like, that was really, really smart by Nick. He was trying to stuff it, but... That Kenta is, just wouldn't let it happen. That is the main adjustment I've seen from Kenta this set, is uh, Kenta's using up tilts to stuff punishes from Nick that he was getting earlier, and now Kenta's not letting him get those, using those aggressive up tilts. Yeah. Oh, the That's duck! It. Oh, no! Damn. That was so unfortunate! He hit the duck with the downer. I don't know if he intended to, and uh, Kenta up aired him for it. And they're hugging it out. Both these players like have overcome so much going into 2016, so you know that like this was a really important match to both these players, yeah. especially since like they have kind of like risen in terms of like just recent uh, growth as players uh, on a very similar timeline. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely an important set for uh, both these guys. And sadly, uh, Nick's tournament run here at Showdown Battle Royale comes to a halt, and Kenta advances on. Now, I'm not too sure who we got up next. I see uh, Zane chilling around. He's got the controller out of his... Uh, My boy. Yeah, your boy. And then I see... Ooh, Mr. Day. Let's go. Oh, Day versus Zane. This will be a good set. Yeah, this could be good. Uh, Luke, likely a Lucario versus Meta Knight, unless Zane plays one of his weird zany characters. No, Zane's going to play Meta Knight. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, last, really just la last week, uh, he busted out a Jigglypuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's been and yes, I did definitely lot. make that Zane joke. He he has been using the Jigglypuff a lot as a joke, but I'm like 99% yeah. sure that he's going to be pulling out the Meta Knight here. He's been working on Cloud a little bit, but I, I think the Meta Knight is going to be the pick. Yep, and we all know Day, oh, <laughs> the stream match info, using uh, Day from uh, Ohio, wrong day. But uh, we got Day from 
Florida. I believe he's from the Gainesville area, so he's a uh, Central Florida. Gainesville?